Hey, we're back. It's Jennifer here from Platinum Skincare, and this is Dora. Hi, good oh, afternoon. Yeah, let's hope that was actually going. <laughs> I was waiting for the thing didn't go. Well, right. just in case, <laughs> this is Jennifer from Platinum Skincare, and this is Dora, in case we weren't live there for a second. Nice to see you again. And hopefully we're gonna have a good connection today. I don't know, it was a little bit sparse last time, so we left the door open if there's a yeah. little bit of noise here and there. Hey, we are live here at Platinum Skincare. We are actually running a business, so there That's could right. be noises. Dora could have to run off and unload a truck. Things happen. Yeah. You know, Our palette got delivered early today, oh, so we're it did. good. Yeah. So you may yeah. be all right, because you know, hey, okay. we are live. That's true. All right, so we're gonna just get started answering your questions that came in at, Perfect. well, and those go to peeluniversity.com. So if you have questions at mm -hmm. the end of this, not only can you write them in on, you know, the Facebook guru page, but you could just go to, you know, Peel University and always enter your questions there. But Absolutely. yeah, let's get started. Okay, so first question comes from Allie. Mm -hmm. She has combination skin, Fitzpatrick of one. She says, can you explain the method for treating ice pick scars on the temple area? Sure. Well, it doesn't really matter what the area is. The process is the same. So this is the chemical reconstruction of skin scars. And basically what we do is we take a very high percentage of acid. Well, here's something that we could we could have. Do we have a little sample of one of our acids? Is one of Probably these open? Not. No. Well, let's just, oh yeah, well, let's say. Here, here we go. No, we don't. Gosh darn it. <laughs> yeah, there we go. There we go. Here's a little bottle. Let's pretend for a hot second, this is TCA 30. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're gonna take a really sharp wooden pick, really sharp. And then we're gonna dip it in here, and we're gonna saturate this, and we're gonna find our ice pick scar. Let's pretend it's on the temple area for this. We're gonna take it, we're gonna poke it in there and press it to get a little pinch, and we're gonna pull it out. And what's gonna happen is that really strong acid, you're gonna get a white frosting right. around there, around the little edge, so you can tell you did something. Mm -hmm. But what's happening is deep down inside, we're breaking down the scar tissue, and we're allowing that to fill in that hole as, as the new tissues grow in. So this you know deep scar is gonna be able to fill in and flatten and be the same level as the rest of your skin. So the whole process, you know, it's over in a matter of seconds, right. five minutes, you rinse that off. It's really simple. It's really quite painless. You might feel a little bit of tingling. And in five weeks, you can do it again. It's super simple. It is. And I highly recommend that you get the <clears throat> Supercop 2X to go along with that. So mm -hmm. after about a week and a half, two weeks, you can start applying this um, inside the scars that will really help to speed up the regeneration process. Don't judge, yeah, it's gonna look worse before it looks better, never panic. And, you know, that's about it. You're gonna just do that a few times, yeah. three to five times. Kinda depends on how deep the scar is, but it's a simple treatment. And before you know it, you're gonna be totally happy. Just stop, sure. when, you're, stop when you're content with how things are looking. And if you have a olive skin tone or darker, you'll want to use the 20 versus the 30. Yeah, and prep Make with sure Fade you're pre Bright. Yeah, prepping properly. Yeah, prep with Fade Bright too. And yep. we, yeah, she okay. used a Fitzpatrick one, so we didn't even right. think about that, but okay. yes, true. So, uh, Allie has another question. What is the best treatment for prematuring, premature aging on the neck? Well, obviously you always want to grab for things like fusion, <laughs> which is our retinoid. You know, retinoids will help to you know, stimulate turnover of the skin. They're good for stimulating collagen and all that good stuff. Right. And of course, chemical peels. So always grab for your TCA. You know, your neck is a little bit more sensitive, so you don't have to always grab for the 13, especially if you're only treating the neck. You can do the 7%. What else? Um, um, you want to just make sure you're putting all your products out on your face and neck. Exactly. You know, your daily products, your um, vitamin C, your retinol. Yeah, regenerate. Feather that peel down on your neck for sure, like you were saying. Absolutely. Yep. Just, you know, everything that you're doing on your face, pull all mm -hmm. the way down your neck. And don't forget your decollete as well. Uh, Crepey Skin Escape as well is another That's a good one. Do we have one? No, that that's all right. But copper in general, right. Yeah. Right. Copper we peptides. have the Crepey Skin Escape. Somebody okay. should take a note <laughs> as to what we need. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, uh, one more question from Allie. She says she's got still remember Fitzpatrick one. Have you ever seen melasma get worse from a peel? I'd like some clarification on how to use a combo of TCA and Jesner for melasma, which strengths to use, and whether I need to work up to those peels, or should I start with Mandelic? Well, I don't think like a peel in general is gonna cause your melasma to get worse. I mean, anything, anybody could get PIH. Mm -hmm. That's not gonna make melasma get worse. That's just something that could potentially happen. It's got nothing to do with whether you have melasma or not. Right. You know, that's just something that could potentially happen with a peel. You have inflammation, it can cause, the you know, hyperpigmentation. Mm -hmm. um, but okay, so how to use a combination of TCA and Jesner. So basically you're just going to apply your Jesner peel first. I suggest mm -hmm. applying one layer of Jesner. Right. Wait your five minutes as always, just like you would do with a Jesner or TCA, and then do your layer of TCA 13. Wait your five minutes. And you know, depending on how you've worked up, that could be it for your very first peel. Right. And then mm -hmm. next time I would do, you know, since you're focusing on <clears throat> pigmentation, I would probably do two layers of Jesner and then a layer of TCA. Maybe next time you do two layers of Jesner, two layers of TCA. That's all dependent on you, what your tolerance is. And I do see that you started, you talked about Mandelic too. So obviously Mandelic's a lot milder. So right. whether you want to do just a series of Mandelic peels, I mean, that's very, very different than TCA and Jesner. <laughs> you have a little side note here. The oral... Oh, yeah. And we were talking about that. <laughs> if I can even pronounce this. The um, transexamic acid. Transexamic acid, if I'm saying this correctly. If anybody is having mm -hmm. really, really, really stubborn, stubborn melasma, and you've been using things perfectly, like we've been you know, mentioning. And it's not budging. It's not budging. Yeah. You're doing your, your Jesner peels, you're doing your Mandelic peels, you're using your Fade Bright, you're using your Fusion, you're doing everything and you've been doing everything for like six months and above and things aren't budging or they've moved and you're just mm -hmm. stuck. Consider talking to your dermatologist and getting yourself a prescription of trans, bleh, can trans I say it? Trans Transexamic or tranexamic. I'm going to say this wrong all day long. This particular <laughs> prescription is an oral prescription. They'll put you on a cycle of that or yes. two or three cycles of that. It is internal. It can really, really help you if you are stuck. Somebody, please tell me how to pronounce this. I'll never <laughs> say it right. Your dermatologist can say it though. Oh, yeah. So just go there and they'll, they'll know exactly know. what you're talking about. And you can Google it. But all that's right. another good one. All right, next question comes from Lori. She's in California. She's also got a Fitzpatrick of one. I want to combine an eye, lip, and overall peel for my face, neck, and chest area. I have a few spots of milia that I also want to go over with an extra pass. Can you give me any planning tips so I can do this in the best order? Also, what pitfalls should I avoid? Okay, so they want to do eyes, yep. lip, and face, that was? Overall, yep, and neck and chest. Well. What I would suggest is that you do one area at a time mm -hmm. and rinse. So I would do something along the lines if I would mm -hmm. do my eyes, you know, one layer, rinse, one, you know, one layer, wait your five minutes, one layer, wait your five minutes, one layer, because I like to say do three layers, your very first time at least. Go ahead and rinse that. Probably mm -hmm. put your, you know, your luminosity on. So that's a TCA7 around that's, the eyes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then go ahead and do your face area. Mm -hmm. You know, your five minutes, your five minutes, your five minutes, then rinse. Well, I guess, and then your extra five minutes on yep. your, your lip area or your milia. I don't know if you have, do you have the separate lip peel? We didn't actually even discuss that if you, cause this is a different percentage. Then you'd be getting really confusing or you're just putting an extra layer on, right. you know, around the lip area. That's probably the easiest thing in the world to do, to be honest with you. Do an extra layer on your milia, do an extra layer on your lip problems, and then rinse that off and put your products on. Agreed. Yep. That's the simplest way to do it. Okay, so Beth, or uh, Bess, B-E-S-S, -S, she's from Albuquerque, New hey, Mexico. Bess. Fitzpatrick of three. 
She says, I am 56 years old and I live in a dry altitude climate. I've done the combination of TCA 13 and Jesner in the past for treatments of sun damage spots, unevenness, and roughness. I'd like to try adding Dream Peel to that combination of TCA and Jesner for a more advanced and possibly to help lighten my sun damaged areas. My question is this, after following the multi-layer application, Per your guidelines for TCA and Jesner, how would I proceed from that point if I wanted to add Dream Peel to the protocol? I also deal with dry, dehydrated skin, uh, most likely tough with very little sensitivity. So she's got tough skin. Um, also, with the addition of Dream Peel added to the multi-layer protocol, how many treatments and how often would this particular com combination be considered? That was a long one. I literally have to relook at that again. All I'm thinking in my head is nano hyaluronic for your very dry skin. Yes. And then, like, definitely get some of the little spritzers. Spritz your face with water. I know you're yes. in a very, very dry area. I have relatives that live in that mm -hmm. area. It is so dry. Put this on every morning on moist skin after you wash your face and then get like a little one of those little Evian spray bottles, carry mm -hmm. that with you, re-spritz your face, it will, inact it will reactivate mm -hmm. this again, and then you'll be able to plump your skin up again. Now you wanna know how to... Add the Dream Peel as a finisher. Yeah, so you're gonna put, so the question is because you're putting Jesner on and Jesner needs to stay on for four hours, so. Right. Do you want to leave it all on? Yeah, yeah. leave it all yeah. on. Do your Jesner, five minutes, you know, TCA, five minutes, TCA, five minutes. You can leave it all on, put your dream peel on, and then six to eight hours, rinse it off. Yep. I do want to give you an alternative in case your skin is really too irritated and you're just like, no, no, I can't take it. This is just too much for me. If you would like, you can rinse it all off and then just put your dream peel on. Mm -hmm. But if it, the, for the very best results, leave it on. Yes. Okay, and then you wanted to know how often you should yes. do this. Yes, 16. You know, you wanna do, you know, a peel one time per month approximately, but you know, read your peel manual mm -hmm. because the more layers you're putting on, the longer you have to wait. You could, yeah. you could be up to, you know, six to eight weeks waiting, you know, once you're getting, you know, four, five, six layers, things like that on. So yeah. just then make sure to do six to eight peels in a row, and then you're gonna be looking at amazing skin. All right, Sarah LaCroix from, let's see, Connecticut, Fitzpatrick of two. I have deep 11 lines, I am 52. What are my best options besides Botox? Well, obviously nothing is going to freeze your skin like Botox is, Right. you know? So, but who needs Botox? I, I, you know, I mean, Botox is great, but you don't have to have Botox. And I think she has these number 11 lines that she's working on, and those are difficult because those are normally kind of deeper. Yeah, well, and those Botox can't even necessarily yeah. help those. Right. A lot of times they'll want to put a filler in. So, like, if you don't want to do Botox, if you don't want to do a filler, then you can do things, that, you know, the best alternatives would be, you know, to stimulate new collagen and elastin. Mm -hmm. And the strongest thing that you can do at home is like a TCA peel. Yes. And I would recommend, I would still recommend doing an all over face peel. Like, you know, I would suggest the TCA 13. I would do two layers probably your very first time. And then I would suggest maybe taking a Q-tip or something along those lines and doing an extra layer probably right on your 11s. Yep. At least another layer. If you're really spunky, you know, maybe two extra layers. Um, but you know, that's gonna be your very best bet of stimulating more collagen and elastin. And then, <clears throat> if you really wanna hit it hard after you've healed after your peel, you can try something along the lines of like the Supercop 2X. This is the very strongest mm -hmm. that Dr. Picard has in his skin remodeling line. I wouldn't do it every day. I would do it maybe like three times a week. You could, you know, pat a little bit of this on there. This is what we like to use for scars, but it's definitely can be used for anti-aging as well. Just don't go overboard because it breaks down, breaks down, breaks down. Right. You don't want to break down so fast that things look bad. You want to like give it time to break down, regenerate a little bit, break down, regenerate a little bit. Right. So that's why I'm saying like three times. Don't fall into the trap like, Oh, it's starting to look good and yes. don't do that. Okay, <laughs> um, her second part of her question says, my 
forearm skin <clears throat> has mild sun damage, but my skin is thin, what mild peel will help? And then she says, I have a few small brown freckle size spots in my eye troughs. Okay, so that's the next part of her question. So let's talk All forearms right. first. So arms. Well, obviously we have Creepy Skin Escape yes. by Dr. Picard, more copper products. Mm -hmm. That's his GHK. So that's definitely mild. That yes. doesn't that, that will help the skin. I would actually mix that with some emu oil personally, because emu oil is skin thickening. Yes. So yes. I would do Creepy Skin Escape in emu oil. If you want to throw a peel on though, I mean you could do like a TCA7. Mm -hmm. I think that would be very helpful. That. Was there sun damage? Yes, was sun mild damage. sun damage. <sighs> Fade bright, of mm -hmm. course. Mm -hmm. Fade bright with that would be helpful. You could do all three of those. I mean, you could put the fade bright on first, then you could put some crepey skin escape, and then the emo oil to seal it all in. I think that would be perfectly fine, non-irritating, and then maybe do a peel like a TCA7 once a month. Okay. I think that yeah. would be a heck of a treatment. That would right. be very beneficial. She says, I have a few small brown freckle-sized spots in my eye troughs. So I'm assuming this area. Right. I have done 7, 13, TCA7, TCA13, and was wondering if there is a way to use Jesner on that area to get more of a peel. What is yeah. your opinion about... Oh, PDO threads. That's another question. Oh, another one. Yeah, I mean, I would definitely, if you just want to dab it on there, I mean, use a Q-tip. Or I was, this, I happen to have this. Right. But, I mean, if it's a teeny, teeny, tiny freckle, I mean, you could certainly use these, leave the cotton on, and you could just dab it into your Jesner. But, yeah, Jesner is absolutely better for pigmentation even than TCA is. Um, so you could definitely use this, especially if the TCA isn't working enough. And don't forget, I mean, did you say you're using Fabrite? I don't even see Fabrite no. in there. Fabrite, very, very important. You know, this is a melanin inhibitor. Sometimes it's not all peels. You can only do a peel once a month. Right. Okay, so it's your daily products that are very important. Use Fade Bright, use retinoids, use your fusion every sunscreen. single day. Yeah, sunscreen, of course. And then go ahead and do, you know, a peel once a month or use Mandelic, you know, once every week or two. Do you have an opinion about PDO threads? I know nothing about these. Threads, um, I've never had threads done. I've heard positives and negatives about threads. The only bad thing about threads is they do leave scarring inside your skin. You okay. know, they've got the little jagged mark, the, the little little jagged things, and they'll, you know, push them up there, and they can pull your skin into plate, your muscles into place, hmm. but it's only temporary. Interesting. And then, you know, that breaks down, and it goes back in, and, and then your skin falls into place again. So it's like, it's only temporary. And by the time you get those done, this is, you know, and I like to watch a lot of plastic surgeons and see their thoughts and input on things. Most of them that I watch are like, by the time you spend all this money getting all this temporary stuff done, you should have just gone and had the surgery in the first place. So does the thread stay in the skin? It does. Interesting. So you're, I don't so know much they're about supposedly, them. Like, I guess that they've been kind of like on and off the market, on mm -hmm. and off the market, because I mean, there's not them, enough, but, yeah. there's not enough good evidence to say like, this is a great product. Hmm. Like the original ones, they've had their issues. Right. Like I've, I've seen some things on it and most of them are kind of like, they're okay, but they're nothing that most surgeons or anything will push because they're like, you know, you're spending all this money to do it. It's it temporary. doesn't feel good. Yeah. It's temporary. It's only going to last months. Hmm. And then it's like, you know, yeah. and then it can cause scarring in the skin. And yeah, then they're like, like the, then they were saying like, by the time you've done this so many times, you're going to end up with a facelift anyways. Mm. Then they're going in and they're trying to move the skin mm. and they can tell the people that have had all these threads. Now it's harder to manipulate the skin around because the threads have caused all this scarring and stuff in the skin. Wow. And that's what they were talking about being a negative. I don't know. I think I would just be like looking into a facelift at that point. Right. By the time you do go just through all that facelift. and how many treatments you're going to have. I'm going to get a facelift have... one day. There is nothing in the world <laughs> wrong with getting a facelift or getting things done. You know, and it, people always want to talk about this. It's like, okay, skincare is for your skin. Right. You have to keep your skin up. Nobody's saying there's anything wrong with Botox. There's nothing wrong with fillers. Right. There's nothing wrong with needling. There's nothing wrong with 
all of these other lasers and all this other kind of stuff that you can do to your skin, surgery. No, there's nothing we can do about the muscles in your face. Those right. are gonna fall. Gravity. It, it, yeah. That is, they're not related. You have to take care of everything. Right. We are a big part of it, but we're not all of it. All right, so Natalie from Maryland, she has a Fitzpatrick of a two. She says, for my next treatment, I'm going to use TCA 20. I have large scars and want to do the cross method. After two layers of 20, could I put the 30 on my larger scars with a Q-tip? Yeah, well, um, that would have to be a pretty big scar to yeah. need a Q-tip, and I would, I. Make sure it's not dripping, you know, like you. Or maybe take the cotton off. Maybe. And you're not, what you're gonna do though, is you're gonna miss, you're gonna miss getting that pointy end in there. Mm. Part of doing the cross is poking it right. into the scar. You know, the cross is actually a combination of needling and, you know, an acid peel. So if you're just setting it in there with a flat surface, you're missing, you know, you're missing that needling, poking action right. where right. You're, you're technically kind of like breaking up the scar tissue a little bit by pushing in there. Like, you know, we're not trying to draw blood, but we are, we're pushing it in there. Yeah. We're into, like, ow, you yeah. know, that hurts. I'm, in, I'm pushing it in there till it hurts. Mm -hmm. So if it's a big scar, you almost might be better off just like dabbing it in there 10, 20 times, you know, really fast just to fill. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't take that long to just dab it in a bunch of times and fill in that, you know, an eraser sized area. I would almost rather see you do that than just glob it in there and go. Right. You know? All right, her second part of her question is she has a couple of raised bumps like skin tags, but a bit bigger. Uh -huh. Can you please tell me which peel and how to use the peel to have them removed? Well, I mean, first, you really want to know what those bumps are. Yeah. If, if there's a question that it's not a skin tag or, you know, something that can or should be removed at home, I would just want to say I would first have it checked out by a doctor. Yes. Make sure. Yeah. If we know that it's just something benign, it's like a, a little skin tag or some sort right. of, a, you know, cholesterol bump or something along those lines and it can be removed safely, then yeah, go ahead and use something like TCA 30. And I would just take um, some sort of a barrier ointment like mm -hmm. Vaseline and just put that around your surrounding skin, you know, to make sure you protect your surrounding skin. And then I would take like a Q-tip, dip it in your TCA 30, just make sure it's not dripping. And then I would put it on there really well. You know, it's you don't want it dripping just because you don't want to get on your surrounding skin, but you do want to get that area wet. Like you don't want to be as careful as you would be putting a peel on your face. We're trying to get rid of this. You know, get it on there pretty good. I would wait a little bit. I mean, I would try to get that to frost. You know, if it frosts really well, right, and around it's all the base, white, mm -hmm. then okay, fine. I would let that be it for today, and you know, yeah. rinse it off and call it a day. Um, as to how many times I would do that, like. How often I would do that, I mean, if you're trying to get rid of it, it's not like you're going to want to do this once a month. You probably might want to do this once a week or something. If you're trying to literally Depending. get rid of something, yeah. see how quickly, you know, when they're trying to get rid of, like, warts and things, how often do they have you apply that salicylic? I, I don't recall. I haven't had to remove many warts on anything. I'm not sure. I'm, it might... It might be daily. Is it daily? It might be daily. It might be daily. Mm -hmm. I would want to check that out because right. I'm not telling too many people to try to remove things very often. But right. yeah, I would check on that. See how, you know, because you would mm -hmm. want it to dry up and fall off. That's not to try to keep it there. Okay. Uh, Tammy Edwards from North Carolina says, what can be done for the dreaded orange peel look on the, on the chin? Right. So like kind of a so, bumpy, textury, bumpy. Look. Right. We were we were talking about this earlier as yeah. it being like it, little spots of you're missing your collagen, yes. depleted collagen. Yeah. Breaking Over time, down. it kind of gets dimply a little bit. Yeah. So it we can. just we just you know want to think of ways to stimulate new collagen. Right. So mm -hmm. you know obviously number one that we know is proven to stimulate collagen, TCA, right? TCA thirteen. I would do a series of TCA 13 pills yep. for sure. You know, start off at one to two layers, do that once a month. Each month you can add on an extra layer. Other things that are great for collagen, you know, we've got fusion, um, which is retinoids. Vitamin C is also really good for collagen. 
Um, shoot, what else? Even a daily serum, like a... Uh, oh, Syncol, or uh, Syn, not Syncol, Syn-TC, mm -hmm. which is a combination of Syncol, right? but that's okay. Right. Um, Syn-TC. Yeah, maybe even a glycolic serum, even, you know, they could maybe yes, throw that in there 15. to keep things exfoliated and... Yep, constantly keeping that skin turnover. I, probably one of the coppers would be very helpful, too. That's always getting that skin regeneration. Yeah, maybe that's like really CP good for serum. skin tone, texture. Yeah. Exactly. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. That would be a really good one. Okay, so Jane is a Fitzpatrick, too. She's from the United Kingdom. She says, hi, I'm in my early 60s. I'm needing help with brown marks lines around my eyes, number 11s which are those ones we just talked about. She goes, I am resistant to Botox mm. and slacking skin. <clears throat> I'd like my face back. So she wants to know how to so, tighten huh? things up a bit and... Pigmentation. Pigmentation. Brown marks. Oh, oh. I was brown like, brown marks. marks around my eyes. And then she has some brown lines marks. around her eyes, which is fine lines and wrinkles. And then she has the number 11 lines that she is resistant to Botox. Got it. All right, so fade bright, fusion, a. And a little bit of sagging skin, it sounds. Yes. Gravity. So definitely things like these mm -hmm. for dark marks. And, you know, Mandelic peel, Jesner peel, those are really good. Absolutely. Um, you know, and same thing for the 11s. TCA 13, we talked mm -hmm. about that earlier. Maybe a couple little extra layers on those. You can use a Q-tip and really get it in there. Um, like the little extra spot treatment. Oh, Sinek. That's right. I don't think we have any of the potions. Well, we do have the potions here. Like, you know, you the Dr. Platinum potions we mm -hmm. have. You can get just the tiny bottles of just the singular, and you put that on straight. That's 50%. Yeah. That's a really it's a strong concentrated one. formula, so strong it's strong. One. And we have a lot of good feedback on oh, yeah, that, absolutely. too. A lot of ladies use that in between their Botox, and it helps elongate yeah. their treatments. Yeah, instead of, like, I've, I've, what I've been told is instead of, like, three to four months, they can go up to, like, five months before right. they're getting their Botox. Yeah. And then as for, like, slacking skin, okay, so TCA can help tighten skin. But if it's, like, muscle, where I was just talking about surgical right. things, if it's muscle, the underlying muscle falling, there's nothing topical that can help that. That is a surgical procedure. So I never yeah. want to like overpromise here because we can only help tighten the skin a little right. bit. We cannot ever fix underlying muscle tissue. That's always a surgical procedure. Okay. <clears throat> Becky has oily skin. She is from the Northeast. She has, or maybe New England, not oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, Fitzpatrick of three. Uh, she said, if the goal of TCA cross is to leave the scabs attached as long as possible, Mm -hmm. Is it contradictory to apply several layers of a lesser percent over top and additionally apply luminosity or dream peel? No. The multi-layer TCA makes my skin peel off in sheets, often taking the scabs with it. Will this still give me the best results of a cross? You know, generally, I would say they, they should be pretty separate. Like... Yeah. So you're saying, like, <laughs> that's interesting that you're saying, well, like, you had, like, a whole sheet coming off and you're taking your scabs. Mm. That's interesting um, because no matter what, maybe do the it's peel all going to come off at do the, the same the, time. Do the cross and then maybe the next you week could. do the overall face peel or... You could. It, it, that's interesting that that's happening because I, I Or wouldn't... avoid that area with the overall peel. Do you know what I'm trying to say? That's just interesting that that's happening yeah. at all. Right. I wouldn't think that they would be coming off that way. Yeah, avoid it when you're when you're cleansing. Don't scrub it aggressively in those areas, maybe. I'm not yeah. sure, because a lot of that skin comes off when you're cleansing, so maybe it's happening when she's cleansing. It could be. It could be. Okay. Yeah, that's just not something that generally happens. I'm not quite sure. I wouldn't, I wouldn't <clears throat> foresee, like, a big, you know, sheet coming off and then those little scabs coming with mm -hmm. it. You know, it's not like a peel-off mask. It doesn't usually come off yeah, like that. Yeah, right. Okay, so Cindy Goodfellow uh, has oily skin from Canada, Fitzpatrick 2. I'm wondering if I can use the Platinum Skin Care Toothpick to apply Supercop 2X to the scars. I'm having a hard time getting it in the hole, so it's just mostly all over my face. Oh, I think she's having a hard time getting it into the indentation. Yeah, so, and I don't want to open this one up, but like, you know, when you, when you pour it out, just get a little glob, you know, you need a little peek on your hand, right? A little peek, 
and then, you know, go over here and just kind of like pat it in there a little bit mm -hmm. and then like wipe it off and it'll just fill in that hole. You shouldn't, you know, if you're not putting enough on your hand, like if you've like got a smear on your hand, no, you're never going to fill in. You can't rub it in. Yeah. You've got to have a little peak on your hand, pat it in there. And then you can like wipe it off and it'll be filled in. Like, yeah, don't try to like rub it in. That'll never work. Just pat it in there. And, and if you have, I'm going to make this suggestion too. Maybe if you're putting on other products first, it's not working <clears throat> for you. Like maybe you've got too many other, um, cause we're always doing like serums and to, stuff first. Yeah. Maybe the holes are already filled in first. So mm -hmm. let's just say, especially when you're doing like filling in mm. a scar. Yeah, that's let's, a Let's say like, we don't want to fill in these holes first. So let's fill in the holes first and even out the playing field before we start putting our serums on. Right. In this particular case. So Got let's it. fill in our holes first before we put any serums on. Just in case that could potentially be another issue. You know, oh, maybe there's serums in there. Right, it's true. <laughs> it's saying no. Or it's moisturizer full is settling in. Yep. Yeah, something's in there already, maybe. Okay, so Lisa from California, Fitzpatrick 3. I have a couple stubborn scars on my nose that are shallow. What can I do to improve them? Well, if they're scars, then just like we're talking about with the cross. I cross questions today. That's crazy. <laughs> Today's cross day. Yes. Seriously. But yeah, do the TCA cross, TCA 30, dip it in there. And, and just make sure we're not talking about pores on the nose. Yeah. We're talking about scars, right? Because a lot of people think like a, a pore. Like a large. Uh, a large pore is when different. Your pores aren't cleaned out. They look a little stretched They're out stretch and they out. can look. Or really much. oily skin yeah. will make them stretch Very out true. too. Oh, yeah. So if, if oily skin is causing that, you want to use things like Fusion A, you want to use retinoids, you want to use like AB cleanser, things like that to clear out the pores, tighten them up, things like that. But if this is an actual scar, which absolutely it can be, go ahead and do the TCA cross method with the TCA 30, poke this in there, do that once every five weeks, leave the scabs in as long as possible that should work really well for you. Okay, so Glenda from Oregon, Fitzpatrick 2. After a TCA 13 peel, when can I commence using the following products? Matrixyl 10%, niacinamide 10%, zinc 1%, alpha arbutin 2%. Hey. All of my products are from another brand. <laughs> the plain <laughs> company, the boring <laughs> company. Um, Any time that well, basically, if it's not a super plain healing product, ooh, we don't want to do that. <laughs> Anytime it's not like a super plain healing product, like a healing oil or something that's just going to be hydrating your skin, don't waste it on skin that's like dry and tight. It's and not going to penetrate. Flaky. You're not properly. getting any benefits yeah. from like, it. So you don't want to waste actives on skin that's just dead and going to come off. You're, right. You just, just put your healing things on. They're hydrating. You're just making yourself feel better. Basically, you're, you're making yourself look better and feel better. When all that's off, now start putting all your actives on again. Now you're good to go, mm -hmm. go right back to a normal regimen. All right? But not until then. Okay. Uh, Carol is, oh, she doesn't tell us where she goes. She says Walnut Creek. Fitzpatrick of two. She's 65 years old. She's been using our products faithfully. I use Retin-A at night, then regenerate, concentrate, and platinumize daily. I also do TCA peels with Dream Peel, and it's a TCA 20. I feel like overnight these products aren't working as well as before. Is there anything I can add to my skincare plan to get back on track? My skin is very used to strong products. I use, it looked so much better. Any ideas? Thank you for your help. I love your products. Well, okay, so she was using. Now, are your peels going well? Do you need to add more layers to your peels or things like that? Like that was a thought. Um, she could have had more dead skin at her earlier peels, where she saw more peeling. Mm -hmm. So maybe now she's saying she's not seeing as much peeling. Right. TCA, and then because she could do more layers, make sure you're getting a nice wet layer each time. Exactly. So get some more flaking going on when you're doing your peels or maybe yeah. cut them back a little bit. I'm not sure how often you're doing your peels, maybe less often and more layers. 
Um, and then you're using Retin-A and Regenerate. Maybe you need, oh, and Platinum Eyes. Mm -hmm. So maybe we need to add some more things. I don't know what kind of cleanser you're using. Why don't you try like our revitalizing cleanser? Maybe you need some more daily exfoliation. Right, yeah, there you go. You know, a lot of times, you know, products can't penetrate well. Mm -hmm. You don't have that glow or smooth skin if you're not getting enough exfoliation. So things like revitalizing cleanser could be helpful. Are you using products like vitamin C? Are you getting enough moisture? You know, things right. like nano hyaluronic. A lot of times people feel like really dry and right. when you're not moisturized properly, your skin just isn't looking, you know, dewy and glowy and beautiful like it should, especially this time of year. I mean, everybody's dry. Dermasnap, 8LM, things like those are gonna give you, like, you know, you've got your your really good exfoliation in the morning and then lots of moisturization, right. you know, during the day. I think things like that are going to help. An extra layer of peel and more moisture during the day, more exfoliation and moisturizing. Sounds good. All right, this is a quick one. Danielle from New Mexico says, how often can I do a TCA 20 peel? Well, that depends on how many layers you're putting on. Always see page 14 in your manual. That's the T that's the that's the TCA page. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the TCA chart. And that's going to tell you, you know, so TCA 20, you know, if you're putting 2 to 3 layers on, you're looking at some point between 4 and 7 weeks. Right. You know, cuz this is a stronger acid, the more layers you put on, the longer you have to wait. So, you know, that really depends on how many layers. So bare minimum, one month, probably six weeks. Yeah. Depending on how many you're putting on there. I'm venturing, <laughs> you're probably thinking two to three layers. So you're looking at a good six weeks. Okay. Uh, let's see, Nicole has dry skin uh, from Maryland. She says, I've been using the TCA peel 10 last winter and 13 currently, totaling about eight applications. I'm hoping okay. to lighten these huge age, age spots on my arm. Uh, decollete and face. Uh, I've noticed some improvement, but I'm starting to give up. What time frame should I expect to rid the spots? I am up to three layers of TCA 13 with lots of peeling. Spend a lot of time outside and wear sunscreen and long sleeves, but I may just give up on peels. So it's basically her arms that she's working on. All right, so you need to add something to this. If you've mm -hmm. just been focusing on TCA, number one, you need a daily treatment, of which I highly recommend Fade Bright. This right. comes in a much bigger bottle. Yes. Because it's not about what you're doing once a month. You're doing mm -hmm. that one time a month. One application isn't the solution. A lot of times it's an everyday thing. So think <clears> about <throat> Fade Bright. This is a melanin inhibitor. This will turn down the melanin production in your skin. And this actually has even acids in this to help, you know, minimize slough off, damaged skin, colors, all that kind of stuff. You can do this every day as yeah, well. definitely. Triple treat, 25% acid. I would use this probably three times a week. And then when you're doing your monthly treatment, I would suggest adding Jesner into the mix, whether you wanna do just a Jesner peel or do a Jesner as your first layer or two layers, and then add your TCA on top of that. This is really going to step up, you yes, know, absolutely. how much pigmentation you're gonna get off. This is actually the prime acid to go for if you're trying to get rid of hyperpigmentation on the body. I would go for this first. This is gonna change what you're, what's going on here. You've done eight peels, and you're not seeing enough. This is what's gonna change that. Okay, uh, next question is from Nasli from Rhode Island. She um, wants to talk about pigmentation, how to get rid of pigmentation. I'm afraid to make it more in reaction. So she's afraid by doing it, she's going to have more pigmentation. Do you have so, ethnic skin, is that why? Well, you know, she doesn't say, but I do talk to somebody named Nasli all the time. And yes, she is an ethnic individual, so okay. I'm so not sure if it's be. the same lady or not. Um, but obviously, you know, we would say Fade Bright for sure. Fade Bright for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're going to be doing peels, that, with that, that will certainly help prevent it. That's, that is exactly what melanin inhibitors are for. Okay. Uh, Glenda says uh, she's from Oregon. Dry skin, Fitzpatrick of two. I use different gel for anti-aging effects nightly without drying or ill effect. 
How long should I wait to use it after I do a TCA 13? Well, wait till you're done flaking. As soon as you're done flaking, then you can go back to your normal regimen, which includes things like retinoids and anything else, any right. of your acids, retinoids. Once, once all that's done and your skin is feeling normal again, then you can go back to your normal regimen. Perfect. All right, uh, Shelly says she has combination skin from Florida, Fitzpatrick of three. How long do you avoid shaving when peeling legs, pre and post peel? Right, so it's much nicer in the winter time. You don't have to worry about that too much, but I would say bare minimum four to five days yeah. before, four to five days after. And I think a really good trick would be just use an electric shaver so yeah, you don't have to worry. great advice. Yeah, because yeah. Every time you shave with that razor, you are exfoliating. Yep. So then if you just pressed a little too hard, especially on, oh, right on the top of your, mm -hmm. where the bone is, and then, you know, even if you did it four or five days later, you go to apply your peel, well, you could end up with, you know, a dark patch there yeah, or something. Yeah, that acid because, could grab to that because Because you've taken mm -hmm. it out too much. I highly recommend an electric shaver so you don't have to worry about that. Now, let's say you do need a close shave because you're going out somewhere to a wedding, whatever, you have to wear a dress. I would just say get one of those gel that turn into a big thick foam. Mm -hmm. I would probably even put some oil on my right. leg before I put my shave gel on so right. it just glide ever so gently when I shaved. Just the most, don't try to get the closest shave ever. Right. Just, just barely shave. Right. Get one of those with all the wires on them so you can just barely even touch your skin. All right, so uh, Noni is from Maryland, Fitzpatrick too. I am 63 and I have some freckles which have faded a lot and I am getting many more wrinkles under my eyes and around my lips. I use in the AM lactic cleanser, hyaluronic acid, vitamin C, dermasnap, eye serum, and SPF 50. At night, I use cleanser, Fusion A, and Serum 30 mixed with moisture, moisturizing cream. Alternating days, good. Um, eye serum, I work full time and do not have much downtime. Any other recommendations? So what was she's the saying. That was a regimen, but what was the question? Mm hmm. Some freckles. She's and looking to more fade some of these freckles, I think. Okay, did she and have wrinkles fade bright under in there? her eyes. Wrinkles under her eyes. And she didn't even and have fade bright in there. Well, if you want, you, oh, okay, so we need no to fade add bright. fade bright in there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely fade bright. And she says and eye serum. So I don't know if that's our eye lift express. I mean, oh, our, we have an eye caffeine cream. eye roller or the platinum eyes. Platinum eye cream's amazing. Well, and you don't have a lot of downtime, but that doesn't mean you need a lot of downtime for some of these products. <clears> like, <throat> like, okay, so the TCA eye peel. This is not gonna cause a lot of heavy peeling by any means. We're doing a very, very dry application. And you know, you're concerned about the wrinkles around the eye area. You can do, you know, two or three very dry layers of this on the eye area and then put plenty of platinum eyes on. Oh, yeah. And no one's even gonna realize you did a peel. It's it's such a subtle, um, almost just dryness. I, I never got any like flake flakes. I just got more dryness. And the same thing for your face. You can do a very, very mild peel on, you know, the face area, either like a Mandelic 22 or a Mandelic 40 or a TCA 7. You can step this up and not have a lot of downtime. You know, no one's even going to notice if you put a lot of oh, no. moisturizer mm -hmm. on. I like to always add like the nano hyaluronic. Yeah, that's really nice. During um, the day. You know, after peels, even after like peels, nano hyaluronic, mix it with some emo oil, throw a little bit of aquaphor on there. Nobody can even tell that you did a peel. You'll be so moisturized. They'll be like, wow, <laughs> you're a little oily today, but you don't look like you're peeling. Okay, so Natalie is from Canada, Fitzpatrick of five, so she has dark skin. Um, she says, body peels. Can I do a body peel without any prep? Fade bright. Well, depend. oh, okay, so fade bright. I mean, just depending on your skin coloring, well, we she's don't know a, what. Yeah, she's a five, so she needs oh, fade bright. Oh, she's a five. Yeah. My bad. No, you really should. Yeah, she's gonna you need really, it. really, really should. I mean, what is the peel you're doing though? She Are you doing specify. like a 
Are you doing a lactic? <clears throat> I mean, if you're doing a lactic, I suppose it's a possibility that you might be fine. But you're probably and doing the this to treat pigmentation. And going with something stronger, I would assume. Yeah. You know. Well, I would try... I would at least try the Fade Bright. <laughs> I really would. And if you don't want to use our Fade Bright, well, then find something else that has hydroquinone yeah. Yeah. or, you know, alpha arbutin, bare minimum 2% in there, and use that for Several four weeks, weeks yeah. minimum yeah, yeah. With, with the Fitzpatrick 5. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you want to be safe. Here's the thing. You're trying to avoid using a product that if you don't use it and do a peel, and end up with PIH, you're gonna have months and months yeah. and months worth of treatment. You'll be creating more it problems. It is yeah. so much yeah. more advantageous to just avoid it. You ever hear that phrase, an ounce of prevention? Yes, <laughs> you know? honestly, yeah. Yeah, you wanna do that. It's just, it's worth it. And you know, we don't, mm -hmm. I don't say this lightly. You know, we talk to people all the time that didn't do the proper it's prep. It's sad when they call and they're just upset because they didn't properly pre-treat and they didn't think it was that big of an ordeal, and now it's, you know, it's worse. So yeah. it's like... It's so much easier to just prevent it. Yeah. And even then, you can't prevent it 100% right. sometimes, but you're you're preventing it so much more than it could greatly have been. Greatly reduces the risk. Greatly, greatly reduces yeah. it. And if, if you're concerned at all, you probably should not do that. Right. Do the lactic 50 yeah, do something instead. Like, mm -hmm. Or use the Triple Treat Body oh, yeah. Lotion yeah, triple instead. Triple Treat's a great option. This is 25% acid. You can't even really apply this every single day without being really irritated. Oh, yeah. I would suggest using even just this three times a week, depending on what the issue is. Why you're doing a peel, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But using this three times a week, four times a week, is like doing a peel by the time you've been using this for a month or so. Okay, so Rosalia has dry skin from New York. I have melasma, so I went to a dermatologist and did a peel about two weeks ago and didn't do anything to my face. Please, I need your help. Can you please tell me what I need to do or how to do it to myself? Thank you. Um, Rosalie from New York City. Well, we don't know what she did. And we have, you know, there's videos on every chemical peel website to you know, show you how to do the peels. Um, on every page, I guess I should say. Yeah. I guess she has to determine if she wants, you know, she may have had a milder peel. Yeah, well, I mean, she could have had like, you know, a lot of places like to do, well, I, I want to say though, if you went to a dermatologist, they probably did something a little stronger than a glycolic. That's more you of like think... an esthetician peel. I would assume they did uh, at least a Jesner mm -hmm. or a TCA or some sort of a combination of those. So you would have peeled, should she say she peeled well? No, no she didn't even say she, she peeled she well. She did a peel about two weeks and didn't do anything on my face. And by two weeks, she should have saw some sort of something by now. Some sort of Everybody peeling. peels at a different pace. But so, evidently, yeah. whatever they used didn't react well with her skin. And that's part of the battle is finding the acid that reacts well with your particular skin. Exactly. You know. And then realize, too, that you can do one peel and you may not see like these great results, but that's where it comes to take a picture. Oh yeah. Always take a picture because, you know, mm -hmm. there very well may have been results. That's why when you go to a dermatologist's office, they're always gonna take a photo of you because they want every single time that you come in, they're looking at that photo to that photo to that photo. And you should yeah. do the same at home. You always right. take your picture and you're gonna do six to eight peels in a row, which is a treatment series and you're gonna compare them. So for melasma, I'm just gonna to suggest to get you started if you wanna do a mild peel series, I would say you can do a Mandelic 40. That's where you would do like a peel once a week or once every other week. A lot of people like to do it once every other week. So let's say you do a peel this week and then next week you use your products like Fade Bright and Fusion and you know your moisturizers and all you know, your sunblock and all this kind of good stuff and then that's one option for you. Or if you wanna do like a one time per month peel, you could do the Jesner. That's gonna give you some good peeling. You're gonna get good results with that. Take a picture every single month and do a series of six to eight. That'll All get right. you started. All right, uh, next question comes from, I'm gonna say Dinky, D-I-N-K-E. Yeah. Uh, what's, better, what's better treatment for dark spots? 
So I think they're just asking about pigmentation Today in is pigmentation yes. and cross, cross day. So fade bright. Yep. Well, fusion too, um, to be honest. I shouldn't even put these down. <laughs> Jesner is your one time per month peel or Mandelic is if you wanna do a weekly peel or an every other week peel. So these are your everyday products. This is your weekly peel or Jesner as your monthly peel. These are just the very best things. And of course, sunblock. Don't ever forget that. Yes. All right, so Kelly has normal skin from North Carolina. She says, once you start peeling, what should you do? Moisturize, use rubbing alcohol to dry so you peel more. <clears throat> when do you exfoliate? Seven days, 10 days? Well, after you do a peel, you basically want to, you know, calm and moisturize the skin, heal the skin. We have our essential healing oil. We have our emo oil. Mm -hmm. These are great to put on any peel. Healing if you've done and a, soothing products. Yeah, if you you've want. done a TCA or Jesner, you could potentially yeah. put a booster on, like our Luminosity or our Dream <clears> Peel. <throat> Those are not mandatory, they're just options. But the last thing you want to do is apply something like an alcohol or a toner or anything like that. Trying to dry the skin out is not going to help you in any way, shape, or form. You want so to please keep don't it do moisturized. that. Moisturize, yeah. No. Don't dry it. Moisturize. And when that skin is ready to peel, which is usually somewhere between two and four mm -hmm. days later, two and five days later for some people, mm -hmm. um, it will start peeling on its own and then it's gonna peel for another three to five days. So there you go, it's gonna peel somewhere. Most everybody is done, no matter what the peel is, by day 10. Right. Starts in the center of your face, rotates outwards. Okay. So Anne from Florida, Fitzpatrick 3, I used two layers of Jesner on my hands, left it on overnight, and I didn't see any results, or I didn't see any signs of peeling. I never saw any whitish spots or felt anything. So she didn't get any frosting and she didn't feel any tingling. Well, I'm not surprised. Yeah. You well, know, two layers is, is thicker. very, you know? very mild. Um, you know, two layers on your face even that, though it's really stingy, even that's pretty mild. Right. I mean, on the face, they'll do five plus layers at a dermatologist's office. So and with how thick the skin on your body is, I mean, yeah, that's very, very mild. So you will probably get some flaking on your hands, I would say, in a couple of weeks. Yeah, it takes time so, for the yeah, body, a couple don't, weeks. Don't be expecting anything the next day. No, no, you won't, no. you'll forget that you even did a peel by the time you see something, yeah. all of a sudden you'll be like, why are my hands so dry? Exactly. And then you'll be like, oh, I did a peel. Yeah, like weeks ago. But, you know, just make sure make sure that you keep your hands out of the sun. Like, don't be spending a lot of time in the sun or anything like that. Put some SPF on if you're gonna be, you know, hanging outdoors for any reason. Oh yeah, for sure. But yeah, don't do anything else on your hands for another 30 days. All right, so Angie from Canada has a Fitzpatrick of two. She says, hi, I would like to know how to use the TCA peels, 13, in a regimen that includes <clears throat> red light mask and nano needling sessions. How many days slash hours apart from each, please? Well, we have a video on this on the website. You know, you certainly can use things together. Now, we are not, <laughs> we don't tell you how to do anything right. needling or anything of the nature of products that we do not carry or retail here. So what we usually say is you want to alternate those. So if you're gonna do peel this month and you can do needling next month. Right. You know, you wanna give it at least four alternate. weeks. Mm -hmm. um, the apart. red light therapy she can do right away. Generally, yeah, those don't cause any heat in the skin or anything right. like that. So we know of a lot of customers that like to do a peel, rinse it off, and you don't have anything on your skin and you can put that on, you know, so it's not causing any heat, you're not causing any damages or irritating your skin, you're fine. And I'm sure you can do the same thing after needling. Don't quote me, because I don't deal with needling or anything like right. that, but um, you just want to spread it apart. You know, each, each thing causes, has its own, you know, regeneration time. You don't ever want to rush things. Right. All right, next question comes from Jeannie. She's from Maryland, Fitzpatrick 2. I completed a peel which consisted of two layers of Jesner, 
two layers of TCA 20 and a top layer of Dream Peel. Post care with essential oil and emu oil. I have not started peeling yet. I did the peel this past Sunday. Should I use luminosity as well? <clears throat> I skipped my vitamin C until the flake and wait, I skipped my vitamin C until the flaking is done. Good. Um, yeah, that's it for her. So Okay, so yeah, you definitely it's one or the other. You yeah. use dream peel or luminosity. And it does say that in the manual. It says that if you put Dream Peel on, you mm -hmm. put this on one time, rinse it off in six to eight hours. Or you can use Luminosity and you would apply this one time per day until your skin starts to flake, which is usually about, you know, three days-ish for most people. Everybody's skin does peel though differently, you know? Yeah. Like it's only, she so, said she did her peel Sunday. This is only Wednesday, right? Yeah. So yeah. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. So and she did dream peel, so she's got a little bit more so time to So you're good. But yeah, you never want to put on more retinoids. No. One. This That'd is be it. irritating. This is it. All right. So Miriam A. from Winnipeg, Fitzpatrick of six. Hello, Jennifer. Thank you so much for your products and all the information you put out there. I am currently doing a series of TCA, and I just completed the second one. The results are great so far. My only issue is that I break out and deal with acne on my forehead afterward. Can I use Serum 15 in between the peels to help keep my face acne free? Well, my question is, if you're breaking out after this, uh, I would assume that you are acne prone, right? Mm -hmm. uh, which I am too. So I would suggest that you follow our acne regimen mm -hmm. on a daily basis, which would be our AB cleanser, our vitamin B complex, so morning and evening, and then add on the fusion at night. So, I mean, this should be your regimen. So make sure to add this in. This will help to clear your pores. This will help to heal your skin mm -hmm. and stop that acne cycle. I think this is gonna work better than the Serum 15. I don't generally put people towards the Serum 15 um, when they're breaking out. It's, it's fine, you know, the Mandelic in there is actually very helpful, but that's not, it's, it's, it's AB cleanser to clear out your pores, Fusion's gonna clear out your pores, and this B complex is gonna heal your skin. So this is what I would suggest. And it's really a five week cycle, so if you get on this right away, <clears throat> by the next time you're doing your peel, since you're generally doing a TCA peel about once every four weeks, if you get on this right away, you know, by the next time you do your peel, maybe you might break out one more time, but then I think you're gonna be good. All right, so Jamie Clark from Marietta, California, Fitzpatrick II, treating a daughter with blemish-prone skin. She is currently applying a prescription clindamycin gel nightly. Is clindamycin safe and effective? If so, where would you insert this product into your acne starter kit? Well, I mean, I would wash put the gel on, that's, is that a night, that's gotta be a night time, is it? Nighttime? I would think so, I would think so. Yeah, I would wash, I would put that on, and then I would put my fusion and my B complex on. Yep. And then, you know, during the day, B cleanser, B complex. Yep. Yeah, okay. add it on at night between your, um, well before your fusion yeah. and B complex. I right. think it's perfect. Yeah, there's no contraindications no, with the there's clindamycin nothing to worry or anything about. like that, so. Mm -mm, okay, not so. Not at all, it's that, fine. Uh, Deb is from South Yorkshire. She says, hi, I would like some advice on what to use on lip lines. I have never used peels before, but regularly use tretinoin. Yeah, well, we have our lip peel kit. If you just want to focus here, this is the TCA20. <coughs> and then it also comes with the luminosity and the CINTC in here. So this is a nice little spot kit you can use. Um, so this is one option. Another option is if you're already still doing, you know, you wanna do like a full face TCA peel, you don't necessarily have to get this whole kit here. You can just do your TCA 13 peel, maybe do an extra layer on the lips, and then you can just purchase the in <clears throat> TC separately in the little vial, and then you can purchase the luminosity separately. Um, you know, that's an option. But that's what's really gonna help to stimulate collagen and elastin in those areas. That's the very best thing that you can do. Okay, so Miriam is from Winnipeg, Fitzpatrick of six. She said, hello, oh, I already read that one. Okay, so we're, gonna, we're down here. So Nalia 
from Tucson, Arizona, Fitzpatrick 5. Can you do a TCA peel if you have active pimples? Yes, you can. And as long as they're not popped, like right. as long as you didn't go popping them, if you do a peel and apply it on top, it's gonna help to dry that out real quickly. So it's beneficial. But if you've like popped it and yeah. you have like that wound, I would avoid it because it'll right. sting like crazy. Um, and if you apply the peel and it's not popped, it may look white. Yes, it doesn't mean it pop me. Frost. It doesn't mean yeah. pop me. It <laughs> it'll means frost. It, that frost will go away in a little bit. Yeah, yeah. and it'll like dry up yeah. really fast. Yeah. That's especially like if it's like a Jesner or a salicylic yeah. or TCA. Those are great. If it's like a mandelic or something, it's not gonna frost, but it will still help to dry it out. So if you did pop it, I would suggest putting like a little dab of aquaphor or Vaseline or something with like a Q-tip, just so you avoid it while you're putting it on the rest of your face, because otherwise it'll just burn like crazy. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Jan is from Washington, Fitzpatrick too. I've been reading about possible interactions between copper peptides and Retin-A. Do you know if there is also an issue when using any of the Platinum Skin Care Fusion A levels and any of your products containing copper? All right, wait. No. Oh, so here's the thing. There really isn't any problems at all with the second generation and Retin-A. So Retin-A is an acid, mm -hmm. and that's why there's a problem with it and the GHK. His GHK is very fragile. So that's Dr. Burkhardt's first generation. So that's really, really fragile. You can't put it on with any acids. Got so it. that's why. So his second generation, which is the CP serum, Super CP serum, and the Super Cop 2X, those can go on with Retin-A without a problem. Okay? And all the coppers, GHK, and his second generation, they can all go on with our fusion because we have the retinaldehyde, the retinol, and the grand active retinoid. None of those are in the acid form. So all the copper is safe to go on with our Got it. ours. So that's fine. Okay, she says, I've been reading that it's best to apply <clears throat> copper in the morning and vitamin C at night. I'm very confused because I thought vitamin C had to be used during the daytime for best results. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure where you heard that. It wasn't on our site. Yeah. <laughs> somewhere somewhere somebody's confused. Mm -hmm. I, you know, and I have heard, now that I think about it, I have heard somebody say before that they felt it was best to put vitamin C on at night. Mm -hmm. I have heard somebody say that. They're like, oh no, you put vitamin C on and go outside, that's going to get all oxidized. But number one, that's the point of putting vitamin C on during the day is to protect your skin. Right. <laughs> but yes, <clears throat> the very best thing to do is put your vitamin C on during the day, put your copper on at night. But just think about it being, well, this is really blue. If I put it on my face, it could leave a blue tint on my face. Let me put this on at night. Yes, yes makes sense. Put the vitamin C on during the day. It, perfect, it protects my skin from the sun. Yes, that's just how you can remember it. All right, next question is from Terry. Her current location is on vacation in Oahu. Nice, <laughs> never been. She says, what uh, happens if you don't use Fade Bright for two weeks? How mm -hmm. will the peel vary? I want to do a 30 on the front of my thighs, or should I do the whole leg? Is Fade Bright also necessary on your legs two weeks prior? Uh, a seasoned face peeler new to legs. Well. I mean, if you're a Wahooan and you're tannin, <laughs> then I would not do a peel, right? especially not if you have not been using your Fade Bright. But like if, if you're telling me and you're not telling me and you're wearing like long skirts and right. long pants and you're not in the sun at all and you just haven't been using your Fade Bright, well, that's different. Right. And you're just, okay, you haven't used it for two weeks but your skin has not been in the sun, you've been 100% protected because right. you're covering it with clothing. I would suggest that, well, in that case- And she does have a light skin, Fitzpatrick one. Then I would say, well, go home, use it for a week or something like that. 
kick your skin back because you were using it, you right. just didn't use it for two weeks. I would say go back on it, use it for like another week or two, then go ahead and do your peel. But if you're telling me that you're actually in the sun and you're getting some tan, now you gotta wait for that tan to fade. Right. Use your fade bright before you do a peel. I would say it's important at that point. Okay. Katherine Williams asks, what can I use not too harsh for deep wrinkles? Something I can use and be okay in public. Why does this one sound familiar? Oh, maybe not. Deep wrinkles. Deep, deep wrinkles, but okay in public. I would say for sure we want to go with Fusion A and then Something you know, you can use something mild. It does. It doesn't have to be TCA thirteen. You know, TCA thirteen is great. TCA stimulates collagen and mm -hmm. elastin. There are other percentages of TCA, like yeah. the seven. Right. I mean, it's it mild. Nobody would even know she probably did a peel if she did no. light one to two layers once a month. I think once that's every a three super, weeks, two weeks. super idea. Mm -hmm. I would say do one to two layers of the TCA seven, so you can get the benefits of TCA without all the downtime. Put some nano on, mix it with some essential healing blend or some emu oil. And no one's gonna even realize you did that great peel. All right, Cindy from Canada has oily skin. My last, she said this is my last question, but then I see another <laughs> question from Cindy right underneath. She says, this is my she last question, hopefully, LOL. Is the restoration for eyes I'm 31. Mm -hmm. I notice lines around or under my eyes. I've got Botox. Uh, there are a few. I've got Botox a few times, but I wouldn't say it's a complete fix. And it's not crow's feet, but very close to the to my waterline. How close to my eye can I go with the product? So maybe like under her eyelashes, she has some creasing. Maybe. Well. I'm not quite sure what you can do about that. I mean, can you put products there or can you put peels there? She said restoration for eyes. So I think she's just looking for overall eye therapy help under the eye. It's just confusing because our platinum eye cream is restoration therapy cream. So Right, 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 right. Um, well, I mean, I would certainly put any of the products all the way all over the eyes, you know, yeah. with your eyes closed. Um, for a peel, you definitely want to form a barrier with like a Vaseline or something. Yes, a very thin, and it doesn't have to be some kind of thick barrier. I mean, just the littlest, tiniest bit is all that it takes to stop it from going. Mm -hmm. You don't need gobs of it. I mean, I would do, you can get really close if you put a nice barrier ointment there. You can get as close as you can get. I mean, right. for real. Watch the eye peel video and see how close that you can get. You can get very, very close. So, I mean, I think that's probably the best way for you to go. Do the eye peel, watch the video, mm -hmm. and then start using the products like, you know, caffeine eye roller or use like CINTC. Use the Matrixyl Synth 6. You know, well, that's in the eye peel kit. I mean, all of that's in the eye peel kit. I would get the eye peel kit. That's got like everything you need in there. Yeah, for real. I would do that. Maybe Makes platinum eye restoration Makes therapy every day. Yeah. Okay, so Cindy's other question says, <laughs> she said, this question is for my husband. Uh, and I'm sure you remember me from my million questions, haha. Uh, he really loves your beard conditioner. We just bought the last five you had in stock, so that would be the debonair yes. line. And hopefully this will keep him good for a bit. And I know we chatted about adding oil into moisturizer, so we tried that last night to try to savor the beard conditioner, you know, to save on the beard conditioner, but he doesn't like the smell of the healing oil and he hates the feel and smell. What else can we use since he doesn't like the oil? We are from Canada, so we can't buy emu oil, and I'm not sharing my B-complex. What about Nano? She could do that. Yeah, the Nano might be a good one to try. Nano's awesome. Well, he could, and he it's could more serum. Nano. It has no fragrance. They could probably find emu oil local, too. Maybe. I mean, we can't export it. Yeah. We used to be able to. That's right. just, yeah. I wish one Fish day and that would change. Fish and wildlife in their... They're, um, who yeah, knows? there's policies. They're, they're they policies. have changed. You know, you ship it for like 18 <clears throat> years and all of a sudden they change the game on you. Okay. But um, try nano. Try to yeah. mix some nano in there. That would make it nice and slick and yeah, I, I think agree. that would be a good one. Okay, so Selvi has 
Oily Skin from Florida, Fitzpatrick 5. I am currently on Tazerac 0.1% and I have gotten quite a few VIP, VI peels. I really want to target residual hyperpigmentation in mild box car acne scars. What would you recommend to conduct Jesner plus TCA peel? Or would you build my tolerance with TCA 13, slowly work your way up to 20 with five layers? I have built up my skin tolerance and I know you'll be wondering, I do use Fade Bright. Thank you for your help. Oh, cause she's Fitzpatrick five. Yes. So if she's, well, you're not worried about hyperpigmentation. You're not worried about controlling acne right now. So I wouldn't worry too much about adding Jesner in there. You know, I would probably concentrate on the TCA mm -hmm. and I would, you know, where she's talking about working up to the 20, mm -hmm. probably for, you know, like a cross method in the, um, into that boxcar area, right. I'm assuming. Oh, for the scarring. That's what I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah. I would think that would be a very good idea. You definitely to just... want to do more layers of a 13 before you move up to the 20, unless you're working on the scar. Then you might be able to go right for the 20 on the scar, correct? Yeah. How many, did she say how many layers? Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see, TCA 13 and slowly work my way up to 20 yeah, with, five, oh, with five layers. So she's saying, should she do the five layers or the 13 first before Yeah, just to work 20? your way up. I don't even know that you'll ever get there. Yeah. But you can certainly, you know, let's say get a tiny 5 ml bottle of a 20 if you wanted to, you know, go right inside of your scars right. and do like a cross method there. Right. Something like that. And I would highly suggest getting the Supercop 2X, you know, to focus on the scars as well. Right. You know, fill in the fill in the scars. Not when you're just doing your peels, but when that's all healed, then you know, do this about three to four times a week. I say that only because it's really irritating. So do it, you know, three to four times a week. That will help to regenerate um, in the scar area. Cindy has another question. <laughs> <laughs> you liar, <laughs> Cindy. <laughs> okay, she says she has combination skin. <clears throat> uh, how long does fusion last in context of it being used with? Within a time frame, I bought 0.25 thinking it was time for me to bump up and my skin hasn't adjusted and keeps drying out even with adding the B-complex and healing blend. Uh, I'm from Canada, so I can get emu oil. So I just ordered more, uh, 0.15, and my plan is to use the 0.15 for two days in a row and then one day of the 25 and repeat and then slowly add more days of the 25. Okay, so she, but she just wants to know like how long it lasts, lasts. That's what she said. Like years. It lasts a while. Yeah. I mean, like, don't worry about it. It's gonna, it's gonna last a, like, And just because you exhaust years. one battle doesn't mean you're automatically gonna move to the next level. No. Like you could remain a lot, of time, a lot of people stay the same one for years. I've worked here for 18 years and I use the 0.15. <laughs> and my skin is, wonderful with it and I but I am sensitive to retinol and I really like the essential FX which is an alternative to retinol for sensitive people like myself yep yeah yep this one has the um, Bucuccio in mm -hmm. there instead of the other retinols and um, retinoids so what do you think of her using this 15 for a couple days and then the 25 for a day and then going or do you think she should just stick Man, with the 15 that might work um, or, or just, you know, adding something in <clears throat> to dilute it. What was she adding to dilute it? Like I, when I do it at B night. complex and healing oil. Oh, well, I mean, that works too. So she's diluting it a couple of times. Yeah. But I just want to make sure like when you, when you do your pump of it in your hand, don't like, you know, put it on and then add something else. Like do the pump and then do your other pump and then do your other pump and mix it all together. Yeah. You know, dilute it. You've diluted it with two other things now, then put it on. You know, that's how you're really diluting it. If you want to do that, you just keep doing what you just, what works best for you. And if you're starting to get dry, well, then you know to take out that day with the 0.25. There you go. And just put it in the closet. And then when you're ready for it, use it. All right. Uh, Adea from Colorado, Fitzpatrick 4. I have a deep, I have deep scar acne, which chemical peels can I use and which products before and after? Oh, wow. <laughs> Again. Yes. TCA cross. This mm -hmm. is cross Yes, it day. is. All right. So, well, we're talking about 
TCA cross again. TCA well, 30. Well, with a four, she definitely has to pre-treat well, with Fade yeah. Bright. Well, yeah, okay, so I didn't even hear that. I yeah. was drinking. Fade Bright, so prep your skin yes. with Fade Bright if you're gonna do a stronger peel. So Fitzpatrick 4, I think you're okay <clears> to do the TCA 30. Um, you're at the you're at the threshold, you know. Twenty thirty. TCA twenty or TCA thirty. Mm -hmm. yeah. One or the other. Um, but yeah, go ahead and do the cross. You know, we're gonna take this little pick, dip it in there. We're gonna poke it into the hole. We have videos of this on the website showing you step by step how to do it. There's also another video on there by another customer who has a um, little bit ethnic skin yeah, like tone, olive skin, so yeah, you can sure. see, like when I do it with my pasty skin, you can't really see, you know, the scab. When you have ethnic skin, you are gonna see the scab. It's gonna be a darker color than your natural skin tone, so you have to kind of like work that into your life because that's gonna be there for probably four or five days. So just keep that in mind. You have to kind of like, you know, yes. work this into your schedule. If you've got the weekend off, I would do it on, you know, maybe like a Thursday night or Friday morning, you know, so that by the time this starts to darken, you've got the weekend for that to be there and come off. And then, you know, Supercop 2X, I think that's just so, so, so helpful when you're trying to deal with the scars. All right, <clears throat> uh, Tina Keys from Florida, Fitzpatrick of three. I, I am a Fitzpatrick between three and four with a lot of freckles, age spots, and atrophic scars. I purchased TCA 13 with Fade Bright and TCA 30, I thought, <clears throat> with wooden put with wooden picks to perform the cross method. I watched all the videos at least 10 times. I did the cross method and saw very little, <clears throat> then followed with the entire face, an entire face peel. I rinsed with cold water, emu oil, etc. When I picked up the bottle of TCA 30, I made a mistake and it was actually glycolic 30, not TCA. I remember talking to her. She said, I called the company and talked to an agent. She said, I ordered glycolic by mistake. So I ordered a bottle of TCA 30 and it will arrive in about a week. So my question is this, do I still have to wait five weeks until my next cross method or can I use a TCA 30 as soon as it arrives? You can use it as soon as it arrives because yeah. you didn't really do a cross yeah, treatment. No, no mm -mm. You, you just did a pokey treatment just like that. Yeah. I'll, you're good. Okay, so <laughs> Ardella from, let's see, Alabama, Fitzpatrick 3. What is the difference between Fusion 15 and Luminosity A? Well, it's just the difference in percentages. Yes. We have our 0 0.15, 0 0.25, 0 0.35, and 0.55, of which we also call our luminosity method or luminosity only because we've kind of tagged that on to our method that goes on after the TCA and Jesner peel, just because it was fun to give it a name. It's not really anything other than right. our 0.55. So, you know, it's just called luminosity method because that's... That's the name of the game. What's what you do so after So the major your, difference is one is, you know, a, a daily product and one is much higher for post peel or Yeah. Some people do use. graduate some people do graduate mm -hmm. to that luminosity for every day. You know, you do have the people that have been, you know, on the strongest prescription retin-A for a very long time, just don't want to use that anymore and want to actually take a step down. So people like that can use our luminosity every single day. Okay. But uh, Shelly Williams says, she's from Washington, Fitzpatrick too. I'm looking to get the most bang for my buck with growth factors. Do I get more epidermal growth factor with Regenerate or one EGF in a Dr. Platinum potion in the exact same growth factor used? Is, is it the exact same growth factor used in both products? Yes. It is the same exact thing. So you are going to want to purchase it in our bottle that is only regenerate. You would actually pay more for it if you purchase it in the Dr. Platinum potions because it's just meant to be an additional add-on if you want to add it into, you know, your Cynic or mm -hmm. your CinTC or something. You just want to add some in here for convenience factor. But if you want to purchase it all regenerate, you want to buy it in the regenerate bottle. It would be less expensive that way. So always get it in here. All right, we're done with that. We're we done got a with couple those more questions. questions online. So we got a couple live questions here. Uh, I get cystic acne. I have one right now. I put salicylic <clears> 25 <throat> on it for 10 minutes. 
Then I put benzyl peroxide on it after. Any suggestions? Perfect. That is exactly what I suggest. Not with the benzyl, but but with that salicylic 25. That yeah. That is perfect. 10 minutes, that's a long time. I think I've left it on for like a minute or two. It's got a bite to it. That's gonna dry out. I'm sure that frost did. Mm -hmm. And that's just gonna, it's gonna dry up. It will probably, that whole piece will probably flake off in a couple of days. And just don't do anything else yeah, to it. Don't, don't do pick, anything don't else. Yeah. Don't do it again. That's a one and done. Yes. <laughs> Okay, do I need to prep my hands just as I do my face prior to a peel? Well, yeah, it is best. So if we, you don't, because we can see your face, you're, you're um, light skinned, so you don't necessarily have to do fade bright to, to help <clears throat> avoid PIH. It is probably best practice to, mm -hmm. but it's not mandatory, mandatory, like if you were a Fitzpatrick four or five. Um, but you know, also things like um, triple treat, that's gonna be very beneficial, or the 15% body wash, things mm -hmm. like that. You wanna get that dead skin off, so you're gonna get a nice even application that's always gonna give you a better peel. All right, Renee says, can you spot treat with scars, not non-ice pick with TCA30 using cross method? before using TCA 13 over the whole face. So like a raised scar or just a line that's a scar. I mean, it is easier to use these with the... Um, cotton edge? With the cotton edge or a Q-tip or something to get a nice precise mm -hmm. application with the TCA 30. It's not technically the Absolutely, cross method. Absolutely, but cross is, is chemical reconstruction of skin scars when you are poking it in, mm -hmm. that's a, for a depressed scar. But yeah, you can be very precise on your you know, application and use a TCA 30 for a scar treatment, absolutely. And don't forget to grab your Supercrop 2X. Mm -hmm. That's, this is your you know, three time a week product. All right, last question comes from Yay. Tracy. Can you use the Crepey Skin Escape on your face and should you rotate that with the Super Copper 2X and retinol. I briefly spoke with you about using the SuperCop 2X with a moisturizer like Hyaluronic, but meant to ask about the other. And can these things mentioned be used on the eyelids? So he has the creepy skin escape and then he has the other the creepy GHK skin. The GHK Lux eye cream is what you would use on your lids, not the creepy escape. Right, and that then would he be has too irritating. Right, and then he has the creepy skin escape, and then he has another the, creepy oh, skin. And one uh, has the DMS something, and one doesn't. And we're like, the only difference between the oh, two yes, was the penetration enhancer. Mm -hmm. So we're like, and I and I did put this on the page. We're like, really, the only difference is this penetration enhancer. So we're like, go ahead and use it on your face if you want to. Just use it with caution. Mm -hmm. Cut back if you feel any irritation. Less is more. Be very sparingly with it. I wouldn't use it very heavily. Do Not really I, for like the jawline down. Like that yeah, neck. Yeah, that's exactly what neck, we were talking. The lower jaw, that's... You know, it, it, I know it can be irritating if you put it on your eyes. I did have a customer call not too long ago, and then I recommended the the Lux eye cream, and she purchased that. So yeah, yeah, yeah it's and strong. then you know that's why I always stay with the coppers. I'm like, you know, use them three to four yeah. times a week, alternate them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just sometimes they're just can be too irritating because they're breaking down, right? Breaking down, and their pH level I think is higher than usual. Right. I think that's why they're so irritating. Well, that does okay, it. Hey, that's it. Woo woo. That was a lot today. There I was felt a like lot. that was a lot. <laughs> well, we are all set. So you can reach out, of course, at peeluniversity.com to turn in your questions. We'll be back in a couple weeks. I think I might be on vacation. No, I don't know. Well, we'll be back in a few weeks. We'll anyways. be back soon. We'll be back soon. Give us a call, 1 800. What are we? What is our phone 1 800 917 3155. 3155. Or email us at support at platinumskincare.com. Yep, and we will talk to you soon. Have a great day. Have a great day.